Let's go faster. So uh, now we have IXD development and an integrated approach for performance characterization uh, by Mr. Suders from Thales Selenius Space. I am Martin Sudars and I'm involved in uh, flight mechanics activities on uh, IXD project at uh, Thales Alenia Space. Uh, so we are prime contractor of this uh, European lifting body uh, re-entry uh, vehicle which uh, is set to fly um, by the end of this year and will be basically a system and technology demonstrator of uh, uh, low Earth orbit uh, re-entry uh, vehicle and uh, will include also uh, experimentation, let's say, of different disciplines and aspects uh, which are listed here and uh, I'm going to talk about aerodynamics and dynamic navigation and so on and so on. And so uh, being a prime contractor of this such a project is not an easy task, so this is what it takes to develop and assemble and test uh, the vehicle to get it ready for the flight operations. And uh, well, we had to find a very good and efficient way and cost saving way in order to manage uh, all of those disciplines and more than 40 subcontractors. Uh, so we had to come up with several, let's say, approaches also to improve, let's say, the work efficiency uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about, let's say, integrated approach between uh, those di disciplines, uh, what we have used them um, at the system level. Uh, so just to explain you a bit uh, what is AXV and what it is, uh, what its flight profile. So uh, the vehicle will be launched by uh, Vega rockets from Kourou and injected in, uh, let's say, a suborbital trajectory over uh, eastern part of Africa. Um, after uh, an orbital arc, it will re-enter the atmosphere over the eastern part of uh, Pacific Ocean and then will cover approximately almost 8,000 kilometers of downrange, uh, let's say, uh, through the um, thick layers of uh, thicker layers of the atmosphere and come down to to flash down uh, in the eastern part of Pacific. Uh, the whole mission will be covered by three ground stations. We will monitor the uh, startup uh, priming activities uh, in the orbital phase and then the late re-entry phase and descent phase from the recovery ship. The trajectory itself uh, is, although it's suborbital, but actually it's quite representative of, uh, uh, of re-entry from a true orbit because uh, the perigee is, qu is quite high, it's 50 kilometers above the ground. So that's a typical trajectory what you get after a the orbit boost maneuver when coming back from a tire set. Uh, so focusing on the on the interaction between mission analysis, uh, GMC, and uh, aerothermodynamic uh, characterization. So how the process is usually carried out is at the mission analysis level. It's what where we generate the re-entry corridor. We inject the constraints in the process and we optimize a trajectory which is then passed uh, to GMC, where GMC then they design the guidance and control system around it uh, and try to inspect the same constraints what we have at the mission uh, analysis level where one of the most important constraints are of course the uh, heat fluxes and the heat loads what have to be uh, let's say uh, what, what the vehicle has to uh, survive and uh, after as a part of GMC design there is a GMC verification by uh, an engineering model, which is sort of like uh, all algorithms in the loop model, or at to the current phase is even hardware in the loop simulations because we have the vehicle ready. It's assembled and now already in ESET. Uh, so the result of this uh, GMC verification is a 
big set of trajectories, Monte Carlo trajectories, which then have to be analyzed and uh, characterized uh, in order to obtain the um, aero thermodynamic load, that is heat flashes, on various critical points uh, of the vehicle. And based on that, actually the TPS design specification is derived. And as you, as you can imagine, uh, at the beginning of a project, so we are the approach is quite simple. We, 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 we work based on some different, let's say, empirical methodologies, such as DKR, and this process, this loop, has to be repeated for a number of times until we converge and have a, let's say, a good, good design of TPS, and which is not too conservative or, or let's say, uh, a large quantity. So here the um, task of the ATD um, discipline is aerodynamic database, let's say synthesis, is to characterize the fluxes on the surface of the vehicle at different flight conditions, which can be very different trajectories, so steeper, uh, low, steeper and shallower, I mean at the same velocity, higher at altitude or lower altitude, where then density changes, pressure changes and rain out numbers go. And uh, second as well, for different attitude angles of the vehicle with respect to the free spin flow, where it's angle of attack, angle of side slip in this case, and we also have two flaps, so it's also the elevator and the aileron deflections. So uh, as I mentioned, it's like the approach normally is uh, we start with mission analysis activities, obtain a trajectory by in optimization, in case of IHC it was end-to-end -end optimization, including also launch vehicle phase, so we had to simulate the launch vehicle performance. Uh, then it's passed to GMC, where GMC obtained, as I mentioned, the Monte Carlo trajectory, and then afterwards the flight conditions are taken from those trajectories, and then TFD, TFDs are being done, and all of them representative wind tunnel tests are carried out but this classical approach has got some drawbacks. Uh, it may not be always robust because, uh, let's say, uh, in order to design trajectory, we use limited uh, reference points, which is normally, let's say, the stagnation point on the nose for the flux characterization. At the same time, it may be, it may be over conservative in some other areas where the heat fluxes are much lower, especially in specific conditions or at specific angles, um, because by this approach we have to we have to assume some, let's say, worst case attitude, that is, let's say, angle of attack, the highest one or the lowest one, which is then producing highest fluxes on some specific areas. Uh, and of also, of course, it means uh, lots of cost and then high impact on the schedule, because uh, this loop, if it has to be repeated multiple times, and each loop is basically several months from the synthesis of trajectory to uh, completion of aerothermodynamic database. Uh, so we have to use uh, some kind of different methodology, and uh, here, let's say, our uh, subcontractors were heavily involved, so we had to develop a dedicated tool which can uh, allow a characterization of uh, the of the aerodynamic database, the heat fluxes on the surface in much more rapid way. So um, the work was basically to use uh, all the data available from CFD, from wind tunnel tests, and then create something like a, like a tool, which is basically a big set of uh, interpolation, approximation, and fitting functions, which then could be used already in the trajectory optimization process, already in the GMC design process and also in uh, rapid post-processing of high number of trajectories, um, such as Monte Carlo, where the normally we have 1,000 trajectories uh, from GMC or 4,000 from mission analysis. So uh, this ATD tool, uh, what, it ba what it basically is, uh, as I said, is a library, uh, which is based, uh, let's say, re regression of different uh, uh, CFD and wind tunnel test data and has got a various different kind of inputs, as you see here, flight conditions, attitude, um, deflection of uh, aerodynamic control surfaces. Um, it features also various kind of 
I would mean phenomena such as uh, laminar to turbulent transition, um, radiative equilibrium, catalicity on the wall, and also it produces uh, both upper and lower sizing tra traject sizing let's say fluxes. Considering that on all computations there is a uncertainty band, where the uncertainty band is depending uh, then on flight conditions, on attitude again, and all, all those things. So it's rather complicated uh, tool, uh, but it works. And okay, just an just an example, um, the surface plot. And uh, what it allows, uh, it allows to to generate basically in very quick time the reference uh, profiles on various uh, surface control points of the vehicle. Um, okay, as I mentioned, the tool itself is based on various kind of tests and, and, and CFD simulations, some of them here. Um, and then uh, this tool was also, let's say, converted into something what you can use directly into the flight engineering simulator of the GMC. So that means in the Monte Carlo analysis, with all the like say various kind of randomized inputs that you can see in the middle, so they are already able to obtain immediately uh, fluxes on different critical points, which may be very difficult to characterize by simple, simplified, or uh, let's say empiric methodologies. So this way, when they do the design, they are already able to see during the process what's going on with the fluxes and so on avoiding, let's say, the post-processing loop on, on our side. However, on our side, we used a more complex um, post-processing loop in order to have a complete picture of the, of the vehicle for uh, more than 200 uh, uh, surface control points, uh, let's say, on the TPS. Uh, so basically for each control point, what we obtain is from all set of Monte Carlo trajectories, we obtain uh, the local steep, and we select basically the trajectory which is producing the higher, highest fluxes on the area of interest, or the highest heat loads on the area of interest, or then other specific par parameters such as um, temperature to passive to active oxidation, and so on. So this way we are able to, for each of the, let's say, area, uh, take a representative uh, profile from the Monte Carlo trajectory. Of course, we subdivide it into some assemblies in order not to, let's say, have uh, too much um, information then pass it to the TPS design. But okay, then on, on each sub-assembly, basically we obtain this most conservative profiles and we then inject them into, let's say, updated TPS specification, which is then used by subcontractors for uh, the TPS design or for the design of the qualification test. Yeah, okay, just some flux figures. So what we what we obtain is on the on the nose you will have 670 kilowatts per meter uh, flux some profiles on some control points. And as a conclusion, we can say that this uh, quite simple approach actually has uh, allowed us to improve a lot our work efficiency, has allowed us even in a very late development phase like phase D to execute various loops of uh, mission analysis and GMC design. And uh, we also plan to use this kind of uh, simplified tool during the flight for real time uh, flux estimation uh, on, on the vehicle. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sadas.